As students, we are very familiar with the daily on-campus study grind. In classrooms, in the lab, and in the libraries, students usually work in locations that are inaccessible by traditional food delivery services. We aim to produce a more convenient and efficient solution for the on-campus community. Introducing GrubTub. GrubTub is an autonomous on-campus food delivery robot. It uses GPS and a variety of other sensors running on a NVIDIA Xavier compute platform in order to make deliveries autonomously and efficiently while being mindful of pedestrians. RubTub has been designed from the ground up to be a simple and intuitive system. We use an iterative design strategy, relying heavily on computer-assisted design. GrubTub, at its essence, is a tub affixed upon a moving mobile robot base. We have a safe electronics bay and multiple mounting points for sensors. We have two main sensor tasks localization and pedestrian detection. Localization makes use of our GPS sensor, our inertial measurement unit, which measures angular velocities and wheel encoders on our motors. Pedestrian detection relies on the Intel D435i stereo camera. Food delivery with Grubtub starts when the user places an order. The order gets placed by a ground station, which calculates the minimum delivery time path that Grubtub can take to fulfill any number of input orders. We use a novel dynamic programming algorithm that calculates the optimal path, and this way GrubTub can fulfill any volume of orders and fulfill them as quickly as possible. GrubTub communicates with the ground station over the campus Wi-Fi network. Once it receives an order, it's off to the races. Our finite state machine for GrubTub is intuitive, modeled after human behavior. The robot waits for orders from the ground station. Once it receives the orders, it travels to them one by one. Our trajectories are handcrafted to reduce the amount of acceleration the food experiences for a better user experience. We use a time-varying linear quadratic regulator control policy. We linearize our control policy about our nominal trajectory and solve it online by solving the discrete algebraic Riccati equations in real time. We've been proposing this very simple policy to make sure that Rotor can deliver food safely. 
When it sees a pedestrian less than two feet in front of it at any point in time, it stops until the person walks past. We've also implemented a platform for the future, a very robust data association system for pedestrian tracking and detection. We use the Yolo CNN to detect pedestrians. And then based on that, we use a calendar filter in order to estimate the detected pedestrian's position and velocity. Now from there, we can actually associate track pedestrians with these detections in order to robustly know the people around Grubtub at any point in time. This way, when we use more advanced pedestrian detection and wood systems, we have a platform to do that. In the event that Grubtub experiences a difficult situation, we have a remote emergency operator that can intervene at a moment's notice. Here we go again. Our localization system consists of a GPS, IMU, and wheel encoders. We're able to get absolute heading using a magic filter, and we use local UTM coordinates to navigate. Oh hey, I didn't see you there. Grubtub uses a linear Kalman filter system to track the pedestrian's locations and velocities. This allows us to roll out into a finite time horizon to predict the pedestrian's positions if necessary. Based on the position and velocity estimates provided by the Kalman filters, we can track an arbitrary number of pedestrians using data association. For Grubtub's pedestrian tracking system, we know that YOLO gives us a series of end detections and we have end tracked objects. So our fundamental problem here is figuring out Okay, we have our set of tracked pedestrians. How do we know which detections correspond to which pedestrians? This problem is called data association. It's a very fundamental problem. So the way we do this is we first think about Grubtub's model of the world around it. When it sees pedestrians, the pedestrians come in, they stay for a while, and they walk past Grubtub, and they're out of Grubtub's field of view. So when a pedestrian comes in, when it's first detected, it becomes a candidate tracker. When it's seen for a while, it becomes a confirmed tracker. Now we can update this into Grubtub's official beliefs. And then when it's not seen for a certain number of consecutive frames, it becomes a zombie. Now it's out of Grubtub's beliefs. So now onto the data association problem. We know that we have a bunch of detected pedestrians from YOLO and a bunch of estimated states of our currently tracked pedestrians from the Kalman filters. One way of solving this data association problem is using the Hungarian linear assignment algorithm. We, we minimize the cost function between our trackers and our detections in order to create the optimal matching between our trackers and our detected pedestrians. Our cost function is Euclidean distance. Because we know that the frame speed and the processing speed of Grubtub is faster than the rate a human can walk, the closer a detected pedestrian is to its tracker, the more likely it is that they should be a match. So based on this, we create a n by n cost matrix and then put it into the Hungarian algorithm and we get our linear assignment optimal matching. Based on this, Grotov can have a persistent belief of the petite pool around it. And from there, it can successfully avoid pedestrians, either by stopping or by doing a more advanced platform in the future. Here at Grotov, we experimented with several control paradigms. First, we started with a reciprocal velocity object controller because it provided obstacle avoidance. However, we found this to give bizarre performance while turning. Next, we moved on to a PID controller. We found this to be difficult to tune, and therefore, we moved on. Finally, we concluded on using a time-varying linear quadratic regulator controller, or TVLQR for short. We generate a nominal trajectory, which is a straight line path, along with um, acceleration constraints at the end. We then linearize the controller around this trajectory by using auto-differentiation libraries in Python, to generate Jacobians quickly online. We take care to make the trajectory easy for the robot to follow, since the robot can increase its velocity instantaneously. We limit the acceleration both during the ramp up phase and the ramp down phase of the trajectory. This also prevents the food from being sloshed around excessively.
Rotom by students for students. students.